Hello. Uh, so today we will be discussing a concept. Actually, we will do that using a problem. This is the concept of bijection principle. I have talked about it in some of the videos previously, but we will start today with a very fundamental problem. It's a very simple problem. It says that x plus y plus z is equal to 10. This is the equation. It's a given equation. And here x and y and z are natural numbers, positive integers. Positive integers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like that. How many such solutions are possible of this particular equation? So this is the question. Find the number of solutions. So I'll give you an example of what I mean by a solution. Uh, for example, 2, 2, 6 is a solution. x equals to 2, y equals to 2, z equals to 6. That's a solution. So 2 plus 2 plus 2, 6 is 10. Or x and y and z are natural numbers or positive integers. So none of them can be zero or fractions or decimals. How many such solutions are possible? That is the question. And we will use this problem to understand the notion of bijection principle, which is used in other problems in combinatorics as well. So how do we do that? Well, here is the strategy. You take x, y and z like we write it like this with th two bars in between them. I, I think of this as three points. Okay. Uh, I mean, maybe I can color them. The first one is a green pond. The second one is a red pond. And the third one is a white pond. So we have 10 balls, 10 balls, 10 balls. And we will be throwing them into these ponds. So let's say one way to throw them is like this. You put two balls in the first pond, you put two balls in the second pond and you put six balls in the third pond. So by just looking at this picture, you can tell one solution to this particular equation. In fact, you, you just have to take a snapshot. Just look at this much and you can tell. Right? So, I'll give you another color code and you can tell me in the comment in the description what is the corresponding solution to this particular color code. So, I'll write it like this. I'll first draw a ball. Then I draw another three balls. And then... I'll draw, actually let me draw four balls and then I'll draw another bar and then I'll draw five white balls. So in the comment, can you tell me what does this particular code, color code, correspond to? Which solution is this? Okay, so the good news is that the number of color codes is equal to the number of solutions. Because whenever there is a solution, there is a color code. For example, if I give you a solution, 7, 2, 1. Let's say this is a solution. x equals to 7, y equals to 2, z equals to 1. You can immediately create a color code corresponding to this particular solution. So, you take 7 balls. And then you draw a bar, then you take two balls, then you draw a bar, then you draw one ball. So that's given a solution, you can find a color code. And given a color code, so that's the other way around now. Given a color code, you can find a solution, a unique solution. So if I give you another color code, let's say this you can immediately tell that the solution is 3, 3, 4. 
so what we what we are trying to say here is there is a bijection between the collection of color codes and the collection of solutions so that's what i'm going to write here there is a bijection that is a one on one on to mapping between the collection of color codes and the collection of solutions so this is suppose solution 1 solution 2 solution 3 and so on there will be many more and there is a color code 1 color code 2 etc so there is a one on one one on to mapping what do what do i mean by that by one on one i mean that for every color code there is a unique so no two solutions are mapping into the same color code two solutions if the solutions are different the corresponding color code must be different okay and the mapping is also on to what do i mean by on to for each color code for each color code there is some solution on the left hand side corresponding to that color code so in the chinta combinatorics program for maths olympiad and isi entrance we talk in more detail about this sort of idea bijection principle it has been uh, used by cantor to prove some fantastic theorems about infinities so those theorems are completely magical in nature uh, you should definitely google cantor bijection principle and diagonalization argument it's fantastic it's a very beautiful piece of mathematics okay all right so what we will do is we instead of counting the solutions we will count the color codes the number of color codes so how do we do that okay we come back to this picture again notice we want positive solutions so each of these ponds will have at least one ball so let's put that in let's first throw in one ball in each of them that's the starting point each of them has at least one ball because we are looking for only positive integer solutions so none of them can have zero balls we have seven balls left so we have now we have seven balls left seven balls left 1 2 3 4 5 6 seven and there are two bars seven balls and two bars and whatever the number of ways we can arrange these balls and bars whatever the number of ways we can arrange these balls and bars that is the number of color codes so how many ways can we arrange these nine symbols well if all of them were different then that would have been 9 factorial but notice that seven of these are same all the balls are same so divided by 7 factorial and two of the bars are same so divided by 2 factorial so if you are confused that what happened right here this is something related to permutation or rearrangement with repetition this is also discussed in our combinatorics module permutation with repetition is very important and this is also sometimes written as 9c2 so this is 9 times 8 by 2 so that's the answer is 36 okay so that's the final answer now before i go on i ask you a different question there is a question and put the answer if the, in the description so instead of asking for positive integer solutions if i asked you how many non negative non negative integer solutions are there if i asked you this question instead of asking you positive integer solutions if i asked you non negative integer solutions then what would be the answer what is the answer So put a comment in the description and I'll see you in the next one. Okay? Take care and bye.